Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, wherever you are. Nice to meet you. In this session, I'd like to share the five ways Recruit maintains high performance and productivity using AMP. Starting with a brief intro of myself, I'm Yosuke, a software engineer in Recruit, a digital service company in Japan. I'm also one of the co-contributors to Node.js, and you can find me on social media accounts such as Twitter and GitHub. Please say hi. I've been working as an engineer for around 15 years, and there have always been challenges in solving both the trade-offs between performance and productivity. We should definitely keep the web app's performance and developers' productivity high, but it's not an easy thing to achieve both at the same time. Here's a quote from the father of the analysis of algorithms. Donald Knuth says, premature optimization is the root of all evil. I can totally relate to this message and recall myself working on optimizing nested loops that don't contribute at all to perceived performance, but sacrificing readability. And I'm not saying performance is not important. It is. But the theme is more around Yes, we should improve the performance, but let's keep the productivity nice and sweet. Earlier this year, we launched a brand new web application called Hot Pepper Beauty Cosme, a web application to share and consume latest cosmetic trends. Based on research, we were able to determine that the majority of users read cosmetic articles while commuting and during transit. This means in Japan, the users will be checking the site on a bus or a train, which indicates that the site needs to be performant in a mobile device and in a random network environment. As I mentioned earlier, the key to build and maintain a performant web product is also caring about the developer's productivity. Out of many different options that we have in 2020, to tackle this theme, we chose AMP as a full stack service to build the type of maintainable application. This means we are not only using AMP in our landing pages, but the whole site is built with AMP just like other sites use frameworks such as React and Vue. As a result, we are able to build the web app strictly keeping del delivery timelines and also achieving the Core Web Vitals metrics after the launch. I'm actually pretty happy with this result. So we thought it might be interesting to share what we actually did using AMP to achieve our goals. But we want to be real. Everything has two sides, good and something not that great. I hope sharing both the highlights and the lowlights in using AMP and how we overcame obstacles would help the developers who are thinking of using AMP. So let's get things started. The very first point we leveraged from AMP is to use it as a component library. There were many types of developers in my team, both expertise and seniority, CSS expert, server-side engineer, JavaScript beginner, and such. It's really easy for the team with multiple backgrounds to rely on JavaScript to build the websites. Some, of course, could be a necessary script but in general, most of those scripts are not used correctly and maintained. We have built some web apps before. The common performance bottleneck was these unused JavaScript. But as you know, AMP does not allow random JavaScript, and in contrast, it provides a built-in web components that we can reuse. We can expect constant performance by using the built-in components, since there are no JavaScript that harms the page rendering and reusing existing libraries of components will likely improve and productivity. We feel the core benefit of using AMP is not becoming fast, but rather the benefit is around not likely to become slow. Any developer can maintain the web app by leveraging built-in components while keeping constant performance. But here is the thing. Are things that easy? Of course, AMP encapsulates the complex logic and building performant web apps. But if you are maintaining a service used by hundreds of thousands of users, 
we feel you need to have at least the best baseline knowledge of how the web works. For example, when relying on a particular third party library, there could always be bugs. You'd need to debug what's not working and might need to act before AMP gets fixed. In this particular case, we suffered from images not showing up in IE11. To make our website reliable, we needed to debug the problem on our own and fix the version of the AMP library. Our suggestion here is, don't think AMP is something magical. There could be cases where you need to customize it to fit your unique requirements. There could be cases where you need to debug problems. There is no silver bullet in updating technical knowledge, but we managed to train our beginners by pair and mob programming. Aside from that, to avoid unnecessary degradation experience, AMP has a new option of using the LTS version of the library, so consider using that. The next topic I would like to share is regarding the ecosystem around AMP to maintain your productivity. It is always recommended to use the appropriate environments to be productive while using AMP. Our team use React for various projects. However, we prefer using Next.js, the server-side framework for serving React-based applications. The great thing is that Next.js now has a built-in support for AMP and it can be easily enabled by just toggling the config. This means we can build our own components and web apps using React while leveraging AMP as the underlying HTML framework, which is a great thing in many ways since this would also mean that we can leverage the existing React ecosystem to accelerate our development. For example, style the components. If you are a React developer, you may have familiarity with styled components, which are a powerful library to style your React component. We are actually using this library to add style to our React component, which ultimately publishes AMP pages on the server side. This sounds awesome. And sure, it is great to be able to use our well-known libraries and frameworks. However, does it actually work? Are there any compatibility caveats? We feel the ecosystem around using AMP as a service is still in an evolving phase, and there could be cases where things might not just work out of the box. In this case, when we use Stride components as AMP components which are not standard elements of the web, building a wrapper React component for each one of the AMP components was necessary. At that time, this was still not yet fully documented and we needed to figure out how to make things more compatible by ourselves. This is not an AMP specific problem, but rather a typical journey that everyone experiences when their ecosystem evolves. Sharing your knowledge and experiences through your global community can help bring us all closer to finding universal best practices. We covered the architecture around publishing AMP pages while also verifying that productivity remained in place. So the question here is, is it easy enough to maintain the components built by AMP its ecosystem? We first need to understand that the web front-end libraries and technologies update rapidly. And generally speaking, keeping up with the updates is not an easy thing to do. And of course, AMP and Next.js are not an exception. Their libraries and frameworks change day by day. Some updates might cause new cases for your users and the side effect may break your existing implementation. The worst option here is not updating your libraries. This can cause it to become stale and unmaintainable. Updating your software is not easy. However, it should always be a priority to try to stay on the latest and greatest. Our suggestion here is keep up with the updates but mitigate unexpected changes. For example, we are using Storybook to check how the components we built with AMP look like. It makes our processes to review the visual changes when updating the library easier. 
We are also mitigating visual degradation by actually diffing the look of each component in CI. For example, if there was something wrong with AMP image, we would know that in advance of the production release. We think by adding validation processes to check the stability of your application, especially using third-party libraries, is important. This is not a specific problem of AMP, and rather a general operational best practice. But of course, it's not an exception of AMP. We think our service is more reliable with having this process while keeping up with the updates. Operational excellence after launching your AMP first site is also important. In our team, we are trying as much as possible to keep the operation simple and same as other websites that we own. When thinking about operation, there could be other teams that care about your site. For example, the marketing team might be interested in measuring success of your site or the product manager might want to add personalized contents. In neither, case of the, in neither of the cases, first party cookies takes an important role and therefore keeping your URL consistent matters. That is why we chose off-cache AMP for our application. This means we are not leveraging AMP cache and always serving our pages from our region. This makes things really simple and operational parity with any other sites. The trade-off here is all the wonderful optimization AMP cache provides automatically and also the privacy preserving prefetch that it enables. But luckily, we have solutions for both of the cases. Next.js has built-in support for AMP optimizer and it enables equivalent optimization AMP cache provides. Also, Google is committed to bringing instant loading that do not rely on AMP using web platform features like signed exchange. This really is a, a good trend we are seeing in the ecosystem. But you might be asking, is a complete off-cache site actually supported by AMP and related tool chains? The fastest and the easiest way to off-cache your document is make an invite AMP. We are simply removing the lightning bolt emoji from the HTML tag for this purpose. But invite AMP would also mean that it fails in the validation process using the AMP validator. In our case, Next.js was running a built-in AMP validator which prevented us to publish our intended but invite AMP document. We solved this by actually fixing Next.js itself to allow using custom AMP validation logic. We think AMP validator is important to make sure that your app is compatible with the AMP runtime. So in this case, we only remove the validation logic around the lightning bolt emoji. There could be other issues you might face, but our suggestion here is to contribute to the AMP ecosystem to validate your use case. The open source community should be waiting for you to participate. While we overcome our obstacles of enabling off-cache AMP, the way I mentioned, I'm very happy and excited to see the AMP team now announcing its official support of the use case by soon adding a declarative option in the HTML. Very easy and simple. This is worth trying out. I've walked through a lot regarding the productivity tips, but let me finish off by talking about performance. In fact, we think AMP is more than enabling good performance, but a well lit path to adapt the latest best practices. First off, our site is fully compatible with PWA. AMP and PWA work well together, and that can be easily achieved. For example, AMP provides a predefined service worker for AMP pages, and all you need to do is call the init function. Also, as I mentioned earlier, our site, while being off cache, is fully compatible with the Core Web Vitals metrics. I'm very happy seeing all the metrics passing the first threshold of the 75 percentile data. But does this mean if I was using AMP, I wouldn't need to care about anything. Should I just read everything that AMP does implicitly? It should be mentioned that AMP is yet another web page and your implementation affects performance. The page could be slower when adapt 
adding new features and such. And the reality is, while AMP is a well lit path towards achieving the core web vitals, not 100% of AMP sites are compatible. And we should also be aware of the metrics that the ecosystem cares about could be changing as well. So our suggestion here is, don't implicitly rely everything on AMP, but set your own KPIs, measure your performance, and set performance budgets for your website. We are using Lighthouse CI to check with our relevant simulated environment and Chrome user experience report to track the LAM data. For example, we detected a sudden drop in the performance score when Lighthouse updated the metrics, and we are currently working on the optimization. While AMP helps adapting best practices, there is more you can do to make the experience better. To wrap it up, I covered these five points that we cared about when developing an AMP first site. AMP can be used as a component library and it goes well with the modern web front-end ecosystem. Maintenance and operation is important as well, where you can adapt your own process to check the stability of AMPs and simplify running the site by off-cache AMP. And last but not least, use AMP to easily follow the latest web best practices. And the great thing is that we are seeing very positive results, not just performance, but also in monthly active users right after the release. We feel that this indicates that the site we developed is providing a satisfying user experience powered by AMP. I believe that AMP is indeed one of the greatest options to build performant web apps while being productive. We have an evolving and passionate ecosystem that will help us guide through the journey. But I would also want to point out, as we have covered in this talk by walking through how we overcame the obstacles, that there are actually more you can do as a developer, whether it's contributing to the open source community or building your own process internally to make your AMP site better. Let's together strengthen AMP and the ecosystem. Thank you.